Hello and welcome. Welcome to day 23. As we're reading through the Holy Bible in 90 days, we are reading out of the King James Version of the Bible. And today we'll be reading Judges chapters 10 through chapter 21. Again, that is Judges chapter 10 through chapter 21. Let's begin. Judges chapter 10. And after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Puel, the son of Dod Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shamir and Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty and three years and died and was buried in Shamir. And after him arose Jair, a uh, Gileadite, and judge Israel twenty and two years. And he had thirty sons that rode on thirty ass colts, and they had thirty cities, which are called Havathjar, unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in common. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Astaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold him in the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel 18 years. All the children of Israel that were on the other side, Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines, the Zidiotians also, and the Amicalites and the Maonites, did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I would deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which you've chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Children of Israel said unto the Lord, We've sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Judges chapter 11. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor. And he was a son of a harlot, and Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with them. And it came to pass in process of time. Now the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went 
with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Amma, saying, What has thou to do with me that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And the king of the children of Amma answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt from Arnon, even unto Jabbok, and unto Jordan. Now therefore restore those lands again peaceably. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon and said unto him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon, but when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent. And Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went along through the wilderness and compass, compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab and came by the east side of the land of Moab and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab, but for Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of the he king of Heshbon, and Israel said unto him, let us pass, we pray thee through thy land and to my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast, but Sihon gathered all his people together and pitched in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the coast of the Amorites from Arnon, even unto Jabbok and from the wilderness, even unto Jordan. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from among his people, Israel. And shouldest thou possess it? Wilt not thou possess that which Sheshmash, thy God, giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, then will he, then will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zephor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns and in Arior and her towns and in all the cities that be along by the coast of Arna 300 years. Why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou dost me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. How be it the king of the children of Ammon hearken not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent him. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah and he passed over Gilead and Manasaw and passed over Mitzvah of Gilead. And from Mitzvah of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into the, mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over to the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he smote them from Aror, even till thou come to Mennonith even 20 cities and unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child beside her. He had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which has proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord had taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountain and be well my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, go. And he sent her away for two months. She went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileite, four days in a year. 
Judges chapter 12. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon and didst not cause us to go? With thee, we will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, Let me go over, that the man of Gilead said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then said they unto him, Say now, Sabaloth. And he said, Sabaloth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. <laughs> then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan, and there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years, then died Jephthah the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him, Ibzen of Bethlehem judged Israel, and he had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he sent abroad and took in 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years, then died Isbon and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him, Elon, a Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel 10 years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Ajalon in the country of Zebulon. And after him, Abdon, the son of Heliel, a Pyrethonite, judged Israel. And he had 40 sons and 30 nephews that rode on three score and 10 ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon, the son of Heliel, the Pyrethonite, died and was buried in Parathon in the land of Ephraim in the Mount of the Amicalites. Judges chapter 13. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine, no strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God, which thou didst send, come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah rose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child and how shall we do unto him? Angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. 
She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. Angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Thou, though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was angel of the Lord. Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do the honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, offered it upon a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at the times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Ashtaol. Judges chapter 14. And Samson went down to Tipnath and saw a woman in Tipnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Sam said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down on his father and his mother to Tipnath and came to the vineyards of Tipnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion and he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion so his father went down into the woman and samson made there a feast for so used the young men to do and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with them. Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. But if ye cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. And they said unto him, put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. 
And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, Lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that? We have. Is it not so? Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth the riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it me. And he said in her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him and she told the riddle to the children of her people and the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion and he said unto them if ye had not plowed with my heifer ye had not found out my riddle and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. In Judges chapter 15. But it came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest that Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said, according, and Samson said, concerning them, now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and two firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burn up both the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, who hath done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. Philistines, Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with the great slaughter, and he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock of Tom. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he had done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock of Tom and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this? that thou hast done unto us. And he said unto them, as they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, we are come down to bind thee that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Sam said unto them, swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, no, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him, with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lahai, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arm became a flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. And he was sore artrist and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? 
But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof in Hakor, which is in Lahai unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Judges chapter 16. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there a harlot and went in to her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither. And they com compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved the woman in the valley of Sarah, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth and by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give thee every one of us 1100 pieces of silver. And Delilah said unto Samson, tell me, I pray thee wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith thou mightiest be bound to afflict thee. Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven green wits that were never dry, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the Lord of the Philistines brought up to her seven green wits, which had not been dry. She bound them with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break their wits as a thread of time <laughs> is broken when it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound them therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait, abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me where thou mightiest be bound. He said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and has not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with the words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go for me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she said and called mm -mm -mm, for the Lord of Philistines saying, come up this once for he has showed me all his heart. Then the Lords of the Philistine came up unto her and brought money in their hand and she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the Philistines be upon thee Samson and he awoke out of his sleep and said I will go out as at other times before and shake myself and he was not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. How be it the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered him together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. For they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy into our hand and when the people saw him they praised their god for they said our god had delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country which slew many of us and it came to pass when the hearts were married that they said call for samson that he may make us sport and they called for samson out of the prison house 
and he made them spore, and they sat in between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines and be bowed bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were there and so the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life then his brother and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Asterol in the burying place of Manoah his father and he judged Israel 20 years Judges chapter 17. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from me, about which thou cursest and spakest of also in my ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou, O the Lord, my son. And <clears throat> when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother and his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image and there were in the house of Micah. And then man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest in those days was no king in israel but every man did that which was right in his own eyes and there was a young man out of bethlehem judah of the family of judah who was a levite and he sojourned there and the man departed out of the city from bethlehem judah to sojourn where he could find a place came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. Micah said unto him, Dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year and a suit of apparel and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite and the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, now know I that the Lord will do me good seeing I have a Levite to my priest. And Judges chapter 18. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day, all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent out their family, five men from their coast, men of valor from Zorah and from Ashtiol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, go search the land who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were about the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite, and they turned in thither and said unto him, Who brought thee hither, and what makest thou in this place, and what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. Then the five men departed and came to Laish and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidianites, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And 
they were far from the city and Odians and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zora and Ashtol and their brethren and said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them, for we've seen the land, and behold, it's very good. And ye and are ye still? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come into a people secure and to a large land, for God had given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zora, out of Astriol, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched the carriage of Zerim and Judah, wherefore they called that place Mahania Dan unto this day. Behold, it is behind carriage of Zerim. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laash and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephoid and teraphim and a graven image and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. They turned to their war and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even to the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither and took the graven image and the F4 and the teraphim and the molten image. And the priest stood in the inner of the gates with the 600 men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, what do ye? And they said unto him, hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth and go with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family of Israel? The priest's heart was glad and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. So they turned it apart and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before him. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's houses were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan and they cried unto the children of Dan and they turned their face and said unto Micah what aileth thee that thou comest with such a company and he said you've taken away my gods which I made and the priests and ye are gone away and what have I more and what is this that ye say unto me what aileth thee and the children of Dan said unto him let not thy voice be heard among us lest angry fellows run upon thee and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. The children of Dan went their way. When Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. And they took the things which Micah had made and the priests which he had and came unto Laish and to a people that were at quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidion and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by Beth Rahab. And they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan. After the name of Dan, their father, who was born unto Israel, howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests of the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Judges chapter 19. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him into her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having a servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him and he abode with him three days so they did eat and drink and lodge there 
It came to pass on the fourth day when they arose early in the morning that he rose up to depart and the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread and afterward go your way. They sat down and did eat and drink both of them together for the damsel's father had said unto the man, be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. He rose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart, and the damsel's father, comfort thy heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon. They did eat both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draw toward evening, I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day grow to an end. Lodge here that thine heart may be merry, and tomorrow get you early on your way, that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem, and there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn in into this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. And he said unto his servant, Come, and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night, and give yeth ore in Ramah. They passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belonged to Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodge in. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the man of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of the Mount Ephraim. From thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, and I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receiveth me to the house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave provender into his asses and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Bilal, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring forth the man that came into thy house that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray thee, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to my house. Do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the man would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them and they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning and when the day began to spring they let her go then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her lord was till it was light and her lord rose up in the morning opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way and behold the woman his concubine was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold and he said unto her up and let us be going but none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him unto his place. And when he was coming to his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces and sent her to all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Uh, 
Judges chapter 20. And all the children of Israel went out and the congregation was gathered together as one man from Dan even to Beersheba with the land of Gilead and to the Lord in Mitzvah. And the chief of all the people, even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 footmen that drew sword. And the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mitzvah. Then said the children of Israel, tell us, how was this wickedness? And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came in to Gibeah that belonged to Benjamin. I am my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me. And my concubine have they forced that she's dead. And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel, for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give her, give here your advice and counsel. And all the people arose as one man saying, we will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. But now this shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it and we will take 10 men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel and a hundred of a thousand and a thousand out of 10,000 to fetch victual for the people that they may do when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin saying, what wickedness is this that is done among you? Now, therefore, deliver us the men, the children of Bilal, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hark to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities, 20 and 6,000 men that drew sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 chosen men. Among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at a hairbreadth and not miss. And the men of Israel beside Benjamin were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah, destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day, 20 and 2,000 men. And the people, the men of Israel encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even and asked counsel of the Lord saying, shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, go up against him. Children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again, 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Then all the church of Israel and all the people went up and came into the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the church of Israel inquired of the Lord for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days saying, shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, go up. For tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And Israel set liar, liars in wait round about Gibeah. Children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people, were drawn away from the city, and they began to smite other people and kill as at other times in the highways of which one goeth up to the house of God and the other to Gibeah in the field, about 30 men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, they are smitten down before us as at the first. But the children of Israel said, let us flee and draw them from the city into the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place, put themselves in array 
at Baal Tamar, and the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of the places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed other Benjaminites that day, twenty and five thousand and a hundred men, all these drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten for the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites because they trusted unto the liars in wait, which they had set beside Gibeah and the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gibeah and the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was a pointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel, about 30 persons, for they said, surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to rise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore, they turned their backs before the men of Israel into the way of the wilderness. But the battle overtook them and them which came out of the cities, they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus, they enclosed the Benjamites round about and chased them and trod them down with ease over against Gibeah toward the sun rising and there fell of Benjamin, 18,000 men. All these were men of valor and they turned and fled toward the wilderness into the rock of Rimoth and they gleaned of them in the highways, 5,000 men and pursued hard after them unto Gedom and slew 2,000 men of them. So that all which fell that day of Benjamin were 20 and 5,000 men that drew the sword. All these were men of valor, but 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness and to the rock Remon and abode in the rock Remon for months. All the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword as well the men of every city as the beast and all that came to hand. Also, they set on fire all the cities that they came to. And Judges chapter 21. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mitzvah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter into Benjamin a wife. And the people came to the house of God and abode there till even before God and lifted up their voices and wept sore and said, O oh Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early and bid there an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the children of Israel said, who was there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord to Mitzvah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives. And they said, what one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mitzvah to the Lord? And behold, there came none to the camp from Jabesh Gilead to the assembly for the people were numbered. And behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead there. And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men of the valent test and commanded them saying, go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword with the women and the children. And this is the thing that you shall do. You shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead, 400 young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. And they brought them into the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some, to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Ramon and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time and they gave them wives, which they had saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead. And yet so they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, how shall we, do for wives for them that remain, seeing 
the women are destroyed out of Benjamin. And they said, there must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. How be it we may not give them wives of our daughters. For the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly in a place, which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Sheshem, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards, and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. And it shall be, when the fathers of the brethren come unto us to complain, that we will say unto them, Be favorable unto them for our sake. because we reserve not to each man his wife in the war for ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be guilty and the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to the number of them that danced whom they caught and they went and returned unto their inheritance and repaired the cities and dwelt in them and the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family. And they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. May God bless the reading of his word. Until next time, beloves, stay blessed.